I know from experience that WordPress can be very overwhelming. <laughs> There's a lot of moving parts, some terms you're not familiar with. So in this video, I'm gonna give you a mini crash course on learning WordPress if you are DIYing your website. If you're new here, my name's Jess, and this channel is all about helping you create a more smooth and profitable online business with the help of your website. And today I wanna give you just an overview of WordPress.org and how it works so you can understand before you dive in. But before I dive in, I want to make sure and clarify the difference between WordPress.com and WordPress.org because they are two different platforms and a lot of people don't realize that. And a lot of people incorrectly sign up for WordPress.com when what you really want is WordPress.org. So WordPress.com is really for bloggers, who don't want to monetize. So if you're just like, I want to blog about like our family travels or something kind of fun just on the side, I don't want to monetize it. That's where you want to go. If you are a business owner or you want to be a blogger slash influencer, you want to monetize your blog, you want WordPress.com .org because that's where all the functionality is. WordPress.com is pretty limited. <laughs> There's a lot of functionality that's limited. There's a lot of, oh, you can do this, but you have to pay more. You can do this, but you have to pay again. So you want WordPress.org, and that's what this video is specifically about. So if you're not into WordPress.org or it doesn't sound that like that's what you need, this video is unfortunately not for you. So the first part is your website host. So your host is like the neighborhood, the subdivision where your house lives and your website is the house and it needs somewhere to exist. Um, it's not gonna be one of those houses that's just out by itself in the middle of the country. It's gonna live in a neighborhood, okay? So your website host is what you need first. So I recommend Flywheel or SiteGround. I'll link to those down in the description below so you can check those out. There are dozens of other options out there. Lots of them are good. Um, I would avoid GoDaddy or Bluehost, but that's another video for another time. Um, so I will link to those below. Basically, you set up your hosting account. Uh, there's usually like a set up website or like install WordPress and they handle that. You'll get an email like, hey, your site is ready. And then you'll have your login information to WordPress. So you have your host login and then you have your website login to log into actual WordPress. So it's kind of like you drive into your neighborhood, but then you also have to like unlock the front door to your house to get in. <laughs> so they are separate. So once WordPress is installed and ready to go, the next step is installing or selecting a theme. Now, WordPress does come with lots of free themes that you can just select from within your WordPress dashboard. These can be limited though. Now, if you're DIYing this completely, this might be a good route for you, um, but just know that it will have some limited functionality. Some themes give you a lot more creative freedom than others. There are premium themes out there also that you can buy, like I use Divi for myself and all of my clients. There are lots and lots of themes out there. Um, I would make sure that whatever theme you are using has lots of resources and a good support team. So like if you're finding, uh, you found a theme, go Google it and like a question, like how to change the button color or something like that and see if there are videos about it. Is there a Facebook support group for the theme? Or is it just like, hey, Bob created this theme and now he sells it and like all of Bob's customers are relying on him to answer their questions. That's not the, the greatest situation. <laughs> um, just because one person is responsible for answering all these questions and sometimes that doesn't work out well. The last thing I'll say about themes is most of your editing functionalities uh, and website customizations happen inside the theme. So that's part of why you wanna make sure you have a really good theme. A lot of times people are like, Ugh, I hated WordPress, it was so confusing, I couldn't do anything. They don't actually hate WordPress, 
they hate the theme that they chose. So that's something you want to be aware of is because the theme is what gives you all the functionality for building pages, changing colors, setting fonts, all of the fun design stuff. Once you've installed your theme, now is time to set up your pages and your posts. So there are two different um, places inside WordPress for posts and pages. Posts are like blog posts, podcasts, YouTube, like that's your blog feed. And then pages are like what it sounds like, pages. So home, about, services, contact. So you will need to create a new page for each page you want on your website. Now, when it comes to building your pages and posts, WordPress has its own built-in editor called Gutenberg. And it allows you to you know, have columns and drag and drop things and add different elements. It can be a little bit limiting. Um, so that's why a lot of people opt for a page builder like Divi, Elementor, Beaver Builder, those kinds of things, which comes inside your theme. So again, that's where the theme comes into play because it gives you a lot of functionality. If you have more of a basic theme, you're going to rely on just the WordPress Gutenberg editor. The other thing that you might need while you're building your pages and posts is plugins. Plugins are like apps on your phone. They give you extra functionality. Some of them are fun. Some of them are a little more just functional. Hey, I need this thing to do this thing. <laughs> so there are free plugins that you can find within WordPress. You'll see a plugins tab on your dashboard. And then there's a whole directory of all the plugins available out there. Um, and you can just search in there if you know the name of a plugin. Um, you can, to a degree, kind of search like, oh, Instagram, like if you want to display your Instagram feed on the bottom of your website. It might be a little bit easier and better if you actually Googled what you're looking for. So like WordPress plugin to show Instagram feed or something like that. You'll get lots of articles, um, the WordPress plugin developers who are like, hey, this is my plugin, <laughs> you know, use this plugin. Or you might see some list like 12 best WordPress plugins to blank. Um, so you can do that as well. Uh, there are also premium plugins. So all the free ones inside WordPress that you can install, there are premium ones that you can pay for to get even more functionality. Speaking of plugins, this is an important, important note. Make sure that you keep your themes and your plugins up to date on your website. So this is one kind of annoying thing on WordPress is that much like the apps on our phone, the plugins on our website get updates, whether it's new features, fixing glitches, bugs, etc. You have to manually update those. Now, some hosts offer managed plugin updates where they will update those things for you. Um, but for the most part, most people have to do that manually. You want to make sure that you are being diligent about keeping these things updated because it makes sure that your site does not break, does not get hacked. Just make sure you keep these things updated. <laughs> so that's kind of your overview of WordPress. You have your host, your website lives in the host. You log into WordPress directly. You have your theme, your pages, posts, and plugins. That builds your website. There you go. <laughs> so I'm sure you have questions. I have several free resources and more videos about WordPress to help you get familiar. Make sure and check those links below. If you have questions, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I will see y'all next time.